Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of The Lock Up, episode 16. I'm your host, Junior Ruiz, alongside my co-host, Brian Adams. Brian, say hello to the good people. How are we doing, peeps? All right. Um, it's been two weeks since we recorded, so we're back. Apologize for the, uh, uh, I, I don't know, the gap, I guess. No, it's not like the, any- the week off. Nobody listens anyway. Nobody even noticed, I'm sure. <laughs> the, the five to ten people that listen were like, hey. I said nine last time. Yeah. So I think, I don't know. I, I think five to ten, you know. It's in the area. It's in the area. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird because I, I posted on Facebook asking people to just share the Comics Remix posts. You know, it takes not even, you know, excuse me, a second. Mm-hmm. And uh, they all liked it. They all shared that they would share it. And then when I actually posted something, maybe like two people shared it. Yeah, people suck. Anyhow, <laughs> um, this week, uh, for those who don't know, if you are in the Chicagoland area, more specifically Rosemont, and you're attending Wizard World, you know that there's going to be a lot of wrestling talent there, from Randy Orton to Sting to The Undertaker himself, Paige and Daniel Bryan are all scheduled to appear. Uh, if you are attending Wizard World and you meet any one of these superstars and you want to go ahead and uh, give us some insight or some feedback into how the experience was, please contact us, comicsremixed at gmail.com. We'll look at your, uh, or we'll be in contact. So, Because we ourselves will not be in attendance next week or this coming weekend for Wizards. So uh, anybody who wants to go on and talk about all that stuff is more than welcome. Uh, but moving on, it's been a uh, very, I don't want to say strange, but a unique two weeks in the world of wrestling. Um, you know, last we left off, Roddy Piper had just passed away, uh, so we'll lead in with that. And the funeral, did you read about uh, what happened at the funeral? No, I actually did not read anything about the So, funeral. of course... Triple H and Steph- Stephanie McMahon were in attendance. <clears throat> so was China. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, according to Sean X Pac Waltman, China nearly got taken down by security because she bum rushed Triple H and to basically just tell him that she was sorry for everything and, you know, she just wanted to bury the hatchet. Um, so some people online have stated, you know, that. Just because Sean was the only one that came out and said that, like, how true is it? Especially because he's been part of China's allegations. Uh huh. Um, but in my opinion, that's not the place to do it. Yeah, I know. You know, um, and if you're gonna do it, walk outside and do it. But uh, with, I, I don't know. It, it just makes it seem like all the stuff she was accusing them of, especially Triple H. Why would you accuse somebody of doing something, you know, like, I don't know if the accusation was him beating her. So, supposedly, Triple H beats China during their relationship. She calls him out on it. So now she's going to apologize to him for calling him out on it. Why would you call, or why would you apologize to somebody for something like that if they really did it? You know, like, I'm sorry you hit me. Yeah, that that doesn't, you know, it's, I hate to say this because I enjoyed her as a wrestler, and in my opinion, she did a lot for women's wrestling. I mean, she's the only woman to hold the IC title. You know, she actually was fighting guys. Not like they don't do that, like, you know, everywhere else but here. But uh, sometimes, you know, things like that, it looks like, oh, I'm just trying to grab my piece of the limelight and hold on, you know. Mm -hmm. Let's make up some lies and some BS. To try and keep in it. That's the only reason that I could see for apologizing to someone that supposedly hit you. Right. Unless it's, if it's fabricated, you know. And then to do it at a funeral of it, all Yeah, places. that's I mean, totally like I classless. said, I could see maybe doing it outside afterwards or something, you know, but. Like, if she's holding any hopes of repairing the relationship between her and WWE, and possibly getting in the Hall of Fame, I think she just shot herself in the foot. You think? Just oh, now? Oh, yeah. Just well, now? Well, <laughs> I mean, I didn't think it was going to ever happen anyway. Mm-hmm. But, 
you know, because you don't run around talking about, oh, I need to, you don't just, it just, it's got to, do you think Ultimate Warrior was running around talking about how I need to repair my relationship with WWE so I can get in the Hall of Fame? Right. I think that's something that just organically happened. Yeah. Well, that's Triple H going after uh, Ultimate Warrior. That's how that came yeah. about. You know? But uh, speaking of China, she um, also revealed in an interview last week that there was plans for her. Now, I don't know how true this is. There was plans for her to be the first woman WWF champion. Really? Yeah. Um, Vince was planning on putting the belt on her, but that's when Playboy came calling, and he told China that if you do Playboy, you're not getting the belt. So it's one or the other. Wow. And she said that she was very comfortable with being with her body and she just felt it's, it's she was a woman and she needed to be you know she wanted to sh- whatever however you want to word it man that comes off to me as she did that to herself it wasn't about being anything see i, I kind of feel like with her now anything that she says you've got to look at it from the opposite perspective mm-hmm. is that she wasn't comfortable with her body and obviously we know as fans i mean i remember the dudes weren't necessarily nice to her back in the day. Right. It's not like she was an attractive woman. You know, um, <clears throat> I'm sure a lot of that was done because she wanted to be like, hey, look at me, I can be sexy. Right. So in a woman's mind, what's more important? Going over in the world as far as looking good or having that belt? Right. Let's see, then again, like I said, this is something she said. No one has come out and said, yeah, that's, you know... A former writer or anything, you know. So who knows how true that is? Yeah. But you were saying earlier uh, about TNA and Jeff Jarrett and this guy and that guy winning and all this other stuff mm-hmm. and how Impact has been pretty good lately. Mm-hmm. You wanna? Oh yeah. So, as we all know, I'm like not a supporter of TNA at all. I think probably out of the 16 episodes we've done, what at least 10 of them, at some point in the episode, I've said TNA sucked. Um. I really can't say about this last week. Uh, it seems to me, you know, this is just my speculation, and, you know, through interviews, we all know that Jeff Jarrett and Global Force are now working with TNA. Yes. Um, this week was we saw the full-blown effects of that because I would say 75 to 80% of their matches, if not if not every match, was TNA versus Global Force. And it was the best episode of, of Impact I've watched. Since I've been watching. They still have the six-sided ring, right? Yeah, they still have the six-sided ring. Which is kind of weird, because I remember, like... I remember when Impact first started, they had the six-sided ring. Mm -hmm. And then I remember I checked into Impact, like, five years after that. And they had went to the regular Well, when they very first started, they had a regular ring. Did they? A four-sided ring. Um, When Impact first started, they did the six-sided ring. Mm -hmm. Um... And then after that, when Hogan and Bischoff came in, they changed it back from the six-sided to the four-sided because they weren't fans of it. Then when Hogan and Bischoff left, they went back to the six-sided. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting. It makes them stand out, but... I, it kind of gives it... I think they want it to look like maybe an octagon feel. I can see that. You know? I can see that. You know, you try and differentiate yourself from all the uh, competition, but at the same time... I really feel like how you make yourself different from the competition isn't is in the ring, right? Um, you know they've they're doing. Wait, some, wait, wait, wait! Repeat that. The last line you said: how you differentiate. Yeah. Is what? How, is is not by the, the style of your ring. Oh, okay. I thought you said it's not by what you present in the ring. Oh I, no! I heard that you would, I was yeah, gonna no, say yeah, what, no. What? No, your ring. The, just because okay, you the have, ring itself. It's like, ooh, gotcha. look, our ring has six sides. Okay. You know, no, we want to see talent. Yeah. You know, if you've got the talent, no matter how strange and, you know, I only say that because, like, I've become, like, a huge fan of Ring of Honor now that it's on TV. Yeah. And they have some, like, it's really, I think I've said this before on the show, it really reminds me of, like, ECW. Not really so much as in the hardcore aspect of it, but in the variety and the strangeness of their of some of their characters. I should bring up our Ring of Honor. You know they have a working relationship with New Japan. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jushin Thunder Liger is supposed to be appearing this weekend at NXT TakeOver in a mm-hmm. match against Tyler Breeze. What does that say? for the? Like, obviously, he's working with... The, WWE has some sort of working relationship with New Japan. What does that say for Ring of Honor, in your opinion? I mean, has not a lot of Ring of Honor talent come over to NXT? 
if anything, I feel like maybe Vince is, you know, this is their attempt to branch out, create relationships with these other independent level companies, and at the same time, you can find some talent here and there. I, I really think that's so what do it's you, about. Do you, because I'm sitting back and, you know, in the last few years, getting to know more companies, you know, mm-hmm. Impact, or excuse me, TNA, GFW, ROH, AAA, uh, Pro Wrestling Blitz out here in Illinois, uh, Dreamwave Wrestling, all these independent wrestling organizations you know and i'm to to cw you know and czw and everything else do you think it's going back to a time before vince bought out all the ta- uh the territories back in the day you remember all that to form the actual world wrestling federation the way it, we know uh, it doesn't it seem that way like these these independent promotions are starting to pop back up again it does seem that way and, and i don't know if that's because it's just be, it's regaining popularity or if it's that people want to go back to that more intimate style of of wrestling, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Um, I have never been to a WWE show. I went to ECW twice. Uh, it was awesome. Small crowd, like very intimate. Like you know, I trash talked. Um, oh my god, I can't remember Carino, Steve Carino. Like I trash talked Steve Carino hardcore both times we went. And both times he talked back to me. But that's awesome. And I think as a fan, you want that kind of, you know, mm-hmm. like back and forth. And you don't, you you know, if you're talking smack to Seth Rollins, you're one of like 30,000 people. Yeah. If you go to a WWE event. You go to Ring of Honor, you're probably one of a thousand, you know, maybe 500, mm-hmm. maybe even less. And then these smaller promotions, probably even less people. Speaking of fans and the wrestlers. Over in the uh, Australian tour, Roman Reigns got his uh, night, his lights knocked out with a uh, money in the bank, money in the bank briefcase. Did you hear about this? You know what? I I saw memes, but I didn't know what it was about. He was in a match with Bray Wyatt. There was a fan in one of the first rows that had a replica of money in the bank briefcase that he supposedly snuck in. I don't know how you're going to sneak in a huge briefcase. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how that happens either. Um, so he was getting egged on by the crowd to throw the briefcase in the ring. So he throws the briefcase in the ring. Timing sucked. The positioning sucked because it nailed Roman Reigns in the back of the head. Knocked him out. So Roman Reigns was sitting in the corner of the, of the ring for a couple uh, minutes trying to regain his composure. Bray Wyatt, um, I don't want to say he broke character. But he was like that in between line because he was trying to. Perfect example when Stone Cold broke his neck, how Owen Hart played to the crowd mm-hmm. while they figured out what was wrong with Stone Cold. That's what Bray Hart, or excuse me, Bray Wyatt did. Also going into the corner and actually asking Roman because you could see it. Yeah, it was plain as day. Right. Because there's fan footage of it out there. Um, gets pissed. He kicks the briefcase out of the ring and security bum rushes this fan and. Um, you know, obviously they escort him out of the building. And now fans are looking at this guy like, dude, why would you do that? Like, you guys were egging him on. You know, and so that peer pressure got to him. He was caught up in the moment, and he did right. it. So, of course, you know, all hell came railing down on this guy. Uh, he issued an apology. Uh, supposedly he was very sincere. He really meant it. Um, and all tra- charges have been dropped against him. But he is banned from every live WWE event for life. That sucks. It does. Um, it kind of sucks also because now what does that say? You know, it's it's hard enough. You can't take so- certain signs into an event, you know? And it's just like, dude, you're going to just, you know, one bad apple ruins the bunch kind of deal. Yeah. You know, it sucks for Roman Reigns. You know, like nobody wants to get it. I, I don't care what kind of superstar you're portraying on TV. You don't do that. Yeah. You know, like I remember as a kid... Because they don't do it as much now. I, I wouldn't even say as a kid, but just a few years back even. When the wrestlers would go ahead and wrestle in the crowd, you know, and the crowd, the people in the crowd would like smack their back yeah. or just touch them or whatever. But it was never anything malicious, right. you know. It was just like, oh my God, I touched Triple H, you know what I mean. <laughs> um, now it's like they, they don't, you're killing it, man. You can't even do that. You're just, you're, it's killing the, the thing. I don't understand why people would do that. I don't know. There's, I, I think there's just a lack of respect by people. You know, it's it's general, 
It's a general ignorance that's setting in on today's populace. Yeah. That's what it is. Uh, so, <clears throat> um, yeah, you know, it, it's really funny. Because <clears throat> I saw the memes of, you know, oh, you know, they're just throwing money at the bank contracts. At, and I was like, yeah, I, I didn't even get it. But So now I t- it totally makes sense. And I didn't bother trying to Google it. I just thought it was some dumbass trying to be funny. And epically failing. But, uh, man, getting banned for life, dude. That sucks. That really sucks. Stay in your seat. Yeah, Act right. like you got some sense. Don't bring money in the bank briefcases to throw at people. Yeah, I doubt they're going to let anybody carry one in. Yeah, now. right. Which kind of sucks for the... Uh, <clears throat> um, not sure why you'd want to bring one of those in. Anyway. Well, some people would do it. I, I would, you know... If you watch every now and then, there's always people dressed up as a superstar. Right. So, I, cosplaying to a, to a degree. So, I could see somebody want to cosplay as a character with the Money in the Bank briefcase. That would make sense. But, you just ruined it for that guy. That would make sense. Oh, okay. You know what? This is a gro- you just gave me a fantastic segue. Thank you very much. Speaking of Money in the Bank. <clears throat> um, I don't remember what episode of the show it was, but I had told you on Lucha Underground that they were giving they had these Aztec medallions Mm -hmm. and that there were seven of them. Yes. And that there was something very special and specific about them for each person that held it and it meant something and they really weren't saying. Well, you know, as we all know, uh, if you don't watch Lucha Underground, like I've said before on the show, it's kind of run like a TV show. They are doing seasons and it's done right now. Mm -hmm. Ultima Lucha was uh, two weeks ago. Um, It was awesome. Vampiro's match, dude, back. Awesome. Like, uh, it wasn't the most technical match I've seen in a long time, but it was definitely the most hardcore thing I've seen since the days of hardcore. But that's not what I'm talking about. Back to these these medallions. So it's revealed that these seven medallions that each one represents uh, a major Aztec tribe, and each person that has a medallion, they uh, <laughs> unveil the belt, and the medallions fit into the belt. And then there was a match at Ultima Lucha um, for what was called the God, the Gift of the Gods. So the seven medallions in this belt form the Gift of the Gods. And then there was a match between the seven holders of the medallions and whoever won, won the Gift of the Gods, which is pretty much like money in the bank. They can trade this title in at some point in the future. Now, it's not like money in the bank where, you know, whenever they want to, to drop, like it has to be like, an official thing. Gotcha. But I thought, like, that was really a, a cool way to do something that's been around for a long time. Because when you look at TNA, they, like, did the contract in the case thing, which is pretty much like, come on, that's money in the bank, dude. Yeah. Like, you're walking around with a briefcase, it's money in the bank. Yeah. At least this is cool, or, you know, there's a doubt. It's unique. It's, it's a lot more unique. But man, I missed that already. It's been off for, about, you know, it'll be two weeks now. God, it's such a great promotion, dude. Speaking of promotion, all the promotion that's been going on because we are one week remove or one week away, I should say, for this upcoming weekend. With SummerSlam. SummerSlam. Now, leading into SummerSlam, I've got to say, Raw, not so much SmackDown, but Raw has been pretty decent. And if you really look at it, most of the matches that have been announced for SummerSlam have only been half promoted on Raw. John Cena versus Seth Rollins. Rollins has been carrying that feud. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Undertaker versus Lesnar. You either have one or both, yeah. or excuse me, one or the other. This week or tonight, we'll have both. both. Yeah, that's awesome. But I mean, in the previous week since mm-hmm. they're brawl, it's either been Brock talking or Heyman talking. Right. You know, it's just like okay. Um, what was the other match? The mid, the Intercontinental, the Triple Threat. Miz has been carrying it, or it was Big Show. Ryback hasn't been there. I mean, yeah, he came back last week. Right. But leading up to that. So a lot of these matches that are taking place have only been like half promoted, you know. Uh, did you happen to catch Cena last week on Tough Enough? I caught the replay of him on uh, at SmackDown. Did you see so that the camera kept shooting him from his left side? Did you notice that? Um, you know what? I didn't notice that, but I did notice that he didn't look as bad as I thought he would. It looks like nothing happened. Yeah, it looks like nothing happened. But that's what happens when you have all that money, that reconstructive surgery yeah, for the I, next I, day. I guess so, man. You know? I mean, like, I I was telling Melissa, I was like, you know, I expect when we see him that he's going to have, like, at least some shinage 
and nothing, man. Yeah. Like, they did good work. You know, it, it makes you nervous, though, because, hey, the guy's going to go into a match next week, and he's still got a, a technically a freshly broken nose. Yeah. You know, reconstructive surgery or not, it's still got to heal. Yeah. How do you go into a match like that? Are you going to wear a, a Cody Rhodes mask? You know, no, no blows to the face? I mean, what happens if you break your nose again? Right. That's a very delicate situation to be in, which is why last week's Raw ended the way it did. With the triple threat, or excuse me, the the Randy Orton versus uh, Seth Rollins with mm-hmm. Sheamus trying to cash in, because that was the supposed Plan B match if Cena was not able to go. It was supposed to be a triple threat match, but and it, did you watch that? I did. Okay, did you notice how bad they stalled the cash in? Yeah, that was horrible. Yeah, it was like what the you know, come on, just it's like don't stand there and argue with the guy. Yeah, well they were saying you gotta okay. Was it A, was it Orton? Because he was not in, back in the ring as soon as he was supposed to be. So it was the ref stalling from Sheamus to take the, the, the briefcase so Orton can get in position to give him the RKO. Was it Sheamus actually trying to cash in and the ref, somebody in the ref's ear saying, you know, hey, no, 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 don't accept that briefcase. Don't accept the briefcase. You know, like, who knows what was going on. Something went on. Obviously, something was not right. Somebody right. missed their cue. Something. Because there's no way... Because Sheamus must have told him to cash it in like 12 times. And the ref was like, what? what? Yeah, I know. What? Was... Like, so something was off. It was ridiculous. You know, some, something was off. But otherwise, it was good. Speaking of Sheamus, have you heard these rumors that, and I don't know if this was just some kind of stupid internet I already joke, know where you're going. But that CM, CM Punk, Punk was, supposed was supposed to, to read Rock for Rocksteady? Rocksteady. Yes. What? Yeah, that's what he said in an interview. He said it himself. That he was supposed to read, or that he was supposed to be rock steady, but the studio decided to go with Sheamus, probably because he's bigger and he fits the profile a little bit more. I'm glad they went with Sheamus. Yeah, totally. And that's not nothing against my personal feelings towards Phil Brooks. Oh, it it's more, <laughs> it's more, dude. If you're gonna go with the look, yeah, of course. Yeah. Why wouldn't you pick somebody bigger? You know, mm-hmm. Punk just doesn't fit the profile. Not at all. I mean, you CGI all his tattoos out, yeah, or right. leave them in because they make him look more like a thug. I don't know. I don't know. He wouldn't have fit the bill for me. No, not at all. Not at all. But uh, the Divas, the Divas have been making some great strides lately. Now, there's a lot of talk of the WWE. I think it's more the wrestling community who started it, but basically making Charlotte their version of Ronda Rousey. What do you think about that? I've heard rumors of that, but there's been so much talk and she's been name dropped so much, Rousey herself, yes. not Charlotte. Yes, I've noticed that. I that. kind of wonder if like Something's she's gonna just not going to get done with UFC and you know do a little stint down maybe at NXT and just you know just a because it's not like she's going to need a whole lot of training. Right. I mean, she's already athletic. I mean, she's just got to learn how to take some bumps. I don't even think she'd go to NXT because that would spoil everything. I yeah. think she would train in the performance center. But it wouldn't be well. That's stuff. that's what I kind of that's, that's kind of what I meant. I guess gotcha. I should explain myself better. I'm like you know. Yeah, because I don't see them putting her on NXT. Yeah, no, no. Well, that would be a total waste. That'd be a total waste of her star power to be on NXT. Yeah, no, she. You know, um, one thing uh, I, I mentioned last episode that we uh, that I've been listening to WZ Daily the podcast, um, which is a really good podcast. You know, uh, normally we don't name other shows on here but in recent weeks i've been really thinking about that like you know it it's like the wwe not acknowledging that other companies exist right i don't want to be that person i don't want this to be that brand so if it's you know if it's something worth then we'll mention it but uh so wz daily over on russell's and we've mentioned russell's on because that's where we get our news right you know um so i've been listening to this podcast a couple weeks uh, a couple days ago i told you uh they read pretty much every tweet that I tweeted out uh, uh, under our name, which was awesome. But one of the th- reason I bring that up because the, pertaining to the Ronda Rousey situation, they were speaking about it, and I tweeted. I says, "What if they bring her in for Survivor Series to start off and pl- just plant seeds and get her on TV again?" Right. And she's in the corner to what Charlotte? What is it? BCP or PCB or whatever they're called now. Charlotte Page and uh, Becky Lynch. Yeah, it's something like that. So, what if she came out in a Survivor Series-esque type match and just kind of represented, been in their corner? 
because what that would also there's just so much there the underlining themes you know uh she's in charlotte's corner they, there's rumors that they want to push charlotte to her level mm-hmm. you know and like i said it just brings her into the wwe again and stephanie mcmahon could easily insert herself into that situation and be like oh who do you think you are you know i started this divas revolution by bringing these nxt girls up and you think you can just waltz in here and be in their corner without any say so and that might start something mm-hmm. you know but I think Survivor Series would be the perfect place. I don't expect her this week at SummerSlam. I mean, if she shows up, cool. But I don't expect it, and it would be out of place because SummerSlam is going to showcase the work that these divas have started. Yeah. And Ronda appearing there, especially with a divas in a segment, unless she's like giving Charlotte, unless it's like a backstage thing, uh-huh. where it's just her and Charlotte, and they tease something, whether it's her against Charlotte or whether her giving Charlotte like the rub, you know, whatever then that's fine. But if it's on screen in the ring camera work, no. I don't see it because then it just kind of squashes everything these divas have come up and done lately. That's why I said you give it some time, maybe Survivor Series. Right, right. And they've done something. The matches have been fantastic lately with the divas, man. And I've noticed it's made divas who you really wouldn't have this discussion about, like the Bellas, Alicia Fox, Naomi, they've all stepped up their game. You know, and you're like, okay, and it's interesting to watch. And they're getting, like, two to three segments per episode now, you know? If I'm not mistaken, did they not get the main event at Raw just recently? Not the main event. They, it was pretty early on, but it wasn't the main event. No. I don't know why I, I thought was, they got a main event. And that's when you know that they're doing something. Either, and I don't want to use this as a comparison, but nobody else has, so I will. The best thing that's been coming out of SmackDown lately are the Divas matches. I know some people will look at that like, well, SmackDown sucks, so that's really not saying much. SmackDown doesn't suck. Well, it does, but it doesn't. It's like, well, if you can write what you're writing for Raw, why can't you write that for SmackDown? Right. Especially if SmackDown is leaving the Sci-Fi channel and coming to USA. You know, you're going to have two WWE shows on USA. They're going USA is going to expect a lot out of that. Yeah, you know, especially I, if they move SmackDown to be yeah, live. Personally, like SmackDown has become like the the half-ass watch show for me. You know what I mean? Like, I watch it when I'm doing other things. I watch it when I'm reading comics. Watch it when I'm just surfing the internet. You know what I mean? It's just background noise. Yeah, I don't pay as much attention to it as I do, like, Raw. I think it's because they don't progress storylines there. No. And they you and know, then you get, like, the same happens. match that you saw earlier in the week or a variation of it. And then you get, a, like, a rehash of, like, there's at least a half an hour in the two hours of SmackDown not not even counting commercials coming out, but a half hour of actual SmackDown that's probably just a recap of what just happened on Raw. Yeah. Which is also something that I feel like they need to cut out on, and it doesn't seem like they've been doing as much on Raw lately, is recycling, like, what just happened. Mm-hmm. It's like SmackDown's the placeholder. Yeah. You know? All right, so final uh, final thing going into SummerSlam here. Lesnar, Taker, what do you think? How, how do you think that's going to play out? I don't know, man. I, I will say this. Undertaker, in his few appearances since he's come back, I feel like looks better than he did when he was at WrestleMania last year. As far as, like, he just doesn't look... He looked really stiff to me in the Bray Wyatt match. Yeah. And it doesn't seem to be... I don't know if he's been working out, like, getting ready for this, but... I, I'm you got to go with Brock, dude. There's no point in letting Undertaker win this. Yeah, because then what happens to Brock? I mean, yeah. Brock's still going to be, you know, the badass that we know. Um, but why put Brock, make Brock look like this unstoppable machine? Undertaker comes back, stops him. Then what? What does Undertaker do? Does he stay around? Which is the rumor, is that he's going on tour uh, with the WWE. And this is his, probably his final swan song. They've got something planned for him, supposedly, at Survivor Series. Because it's his 25th year from his first appearance. Um, and then, of course, you get WrestleMania. Right. You know, so, okay, let's look at it this way. Taker goes over in this match. What happens? What happens with Taker? What happens with Brock? How, right. how would you book it? If if Taker goes over, then obviously, I mean, you know, they'll have to have a rematch. The uh, So the rubber match. You'd, you'd have to. I would really like to think that if this is going to be his last year actually wrestling and WrestleMania is going to be his last match... That somehow, some way, they've got to give us Undertaker versus Sting. Yes. I mean, 
That's just, you know, you have to. There was rumors that that might happen at Survivor Series. Yeah, that's a waste of a match for Survivor Series, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I agree. Unless they're trying to, like, beef it. Because it appears to me that, like, this year they're trying to, like, pump SummerSlam up. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of solid matches in SummerSlam. Whereas, like, a few weeks ago, SummerSlam was like, yeah, you know, it's going to be all right. But I'm looking forward to it now. Looking forward to take over a little more. Yeah. But that's just me. You know, I would do a SummerSlam traditional match. You know, the the tag matches that they do, the 4-on-4, 5-on-5, whatever. And you throw Taker in one of those. Why not? Yeah. You know, that would get him... Like, I wouldn't mind if Taker comes back for one last run. He needs to come back the way he came back during his SmackDown run. When he was going against Batista in all those matches. When he went up against Jeff Hardy. When he went up against Punk. That last run that he had there, that's what he needs again. Give me one of those. Now, what do you do? Brock goes over. How do you do this? How do you book that? <sighs> then what? I, I don't know, man. I, I, it's, they've, it's developed in such a weird playing field now that I don't really know what to do with him anymore. With Brock? Like, I don't know what the hell they're going to do with him. All right. D- does Sting appear at SummerSlam? Because here's, here's the weird thing. Remember, Taker's here in Chicago on Friday. Sting is in Chicago on Saturday. Saturday is also the NXT TakeOver in Brooklyn, which they also have Sting appearing at for, like, autographs and stuff like really? that. Okay, so what if they drop this? What if... But, see, there's, like... this so is Sting's stupid, gotta be if, here and in New York on the same day. Because what if Sting somehow gets involved in this Brock-Taker match? What's the purpose of that? Because you know Brock versus Sting, it's just... No one wants to see that. Yeah, I don't no. want to see that. No, because nobody wants to see, see Sting lose again. Yeah, no. And nobody wants to see him get destroyed. Because I, I, I honestly, as big of a Sting fan as I am, I don't put Sting over Lesnar. And then why does why would Sting get involved in... You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, okay, back to, to Battleground, the, the uh, Brock-Seth Rollins match. It made sense... When Undertaker showed up. Right. And attacked Brock. It made sense. Yeah, it was like out of left field, but it made sense. Mm-hmm. How do you inject Sting into that and it makes sense? I don't see how that happens. The only way that could happen is if Sting comes in as a heel. But do you do that? I don't think so. Because he can come in as a heel, cost Taker the match. Obviously, Brock goes over. He looks at Taker, you know... Just basically, you know, you and me, I'm tired of this. You know, I heard you got one last hurrah on you. I wanted to get to you before Lesnar destroyed you. And, you know. Yeah, that could be. But. And they could even pull two matches out of it, you know. Yeah, but here. They could push it off till, till Survivor Series or even uh, the Rumble. So the big rumor is because Sting is going to be around, that they don't have him show up at SummerSlam. They actually have him show up the next night on Raw because Raw takes place there as well. Mm-hmm. That. Or I look at it as whoever goes over, like let's say Lesnar goes over, Taker's laying there defeated, that's when Sting comes out. Maybe tries to offer him a helping hand, Taker's mad, doesn't want it. Next night, Sting comes out on Raw, Taker, I know you're here, I tried to help you out, you know, I, 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 don't, I know what it's like to be, you know, I can imagine, you know, two in a row to Lesnar, trying to play the... Like the sympathetic ear? Yeah, Taker wants nothing to do with it. So that way, it makes Sting... Stay the heel, or excuse me, the face. Taker gets that because Taker can play a heel or a face. It doesn't even matter. He's still gonna have, get the same reception. Right. So. But like even Marie, who sucks. Like real quick, in, in a minute, can you explain to me what the f that they're even trying to do with her? They're gonna make her the most hated diva. I mean, she already is. Like I don't know if you watch Total Divas at all, or not I, the current I, stuff. They're like. But she has really gone out of her way to, like... And, and I'm sure, like, 80% of it's for that show to make it look like... But they have made her look like this arrogant biatch that thinks, like, that she is the best. Like, I'm going to be the, the diva's version of The Rock. Like, what? Please. You never know. The Rock could wrestle. We all hated The, the Rock, Rock, though. The Rock could act. We all but the man the can still wrestle. Hey, if she's willing to put in that time and she's really willing to learn and give it a go, 
You gotta and then she's it. wanting to do like a like crazy finishing moves and stuff. Mm. That like that girl's gonna kill somebody, dude. Hey, however she can get over that the that's yeah. what counts, I guess. I don't think so. I just don't see it. Well, we'll we'll see what happens. With the amount of talent that they have, that chick's just a waste of time and space. Well, you know what? You gotta have somebody for tomorrow. You know, you always gotta keep one in the back pocket. Yeah, but is the one you keep in your back pocket in their 30s? She's not that old. Yes, she is. Is she? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe late 20s. She's older. And she has no talent. And she has no skill. And she doesn't seem like she really has any love for the business to me. To me, it seems like she's more about trying to get that, that them acting roles and trying to do that modeling stuff. Whereas Here, let me throw the swerve at you real quick. Let me, let me throw the swerve at you. What if all of that, what if the personality, what if the no wrestling skills, what if that's all part of the gimmick to get her over? What if the girl can actually wrestle, but they're fronting like she can't? If that's the case, well, then they're doing a hell of a job selling it. Because you know WWE is not going to keep somebody under contract that's not good for them. Like, I don't know... They got you, enough divas to choose yeah, from Yeah, but right you know now. what? And then they're bringing back the diva search as well? If... We all know that Vince is kind of hard-headed and not very wise all the time. Maybe this is just some stupid thing. I mean, because the girl... I mean, I don't know if you saw her NXT debut match. It was awful. It was awful. And I know that I would be pissed off if I was one of those girls and I'm out there busting my ass, pulling off these great matches night after night, and this douchebag is down at NXT just looking like crap, talking about how she's going to be the next big... Man, please. She's terrible. Watch her debut match. It's horrible. Well, no. I mean, you just told me. I don't know. Well, I've been watching them. I tried to watch NXT a couple, uh, last weekend. I was eating dinner. And I looked, and it said I had watched all these previous man, all these episodes already. I was like, no, I didn't. And then I remembered. I was like, ah, okay. Threw me off, man. I couldn't remember which one I left off at. So. But uh, that's all we got for Lock Up this week. Uh, as always, everything Comics Remix, you can just hit us up on social media, at Comics Remix on Twitter, uh, Facebook.com slash Comics Remix. Uh, at the Spinner Rack on Twitter. Uh, catch Alex's remixed reviews over on YouTube. Um, he is doing pretty good with the new house. I spent the whole day with him yesterday. Um, so he'll be uh, setting his stuff up pretty soon and doing some more reviews. Um, website is coming very soon. I guess that's about I mean, I really don't have anything else. If you need to contact us. Uh, just contact us at our individual names at comicsremix.com. And that's all I got, man. You got anything? You guys enjoy Monday Night Raw tonight and uh, enjoy SummerSlam this weekend. SummerSlam. Oh, yeah. Finn Balor goes over Kevin Owens this uh, this weekend at NXT TakeOver. Of course. Of course. Especially because Balor, or Finn, o- or Finn Owens, Kevin Owens has a match the very next night at SummerSlam. Yeah. It wouldn't I, make any sense. I, I, you know, I want to see that match so bad, him and Cesaro. But I have a feeling that match is not going to deliver, only because Kevin Owens is going to be too banged up from the ladder match the night before. You think so? Yeah. Well, we'll see what kind of man Kevin Owens is, I guess. We'll, we'll see his medal. I guess so. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Have a great one. Peace.